Well, most people think that I'm, you know, extremely successful and that I'm rolling in money. Okay, it's true. No, no, no. I've been studying art since I was born. When the doctor's hand came toward me to slap me, looking at the light on the skin, the muscles, the endoskeleton. Now, I, um, I have been studying. I went overseas for a little while and studied. Uh, and I've been, I used to set up easel in the Auckland City Gallery and study and went to a design school in Auckland. In New Zealand, not going to Elam or Ilam, uh, makes it very difficult for, for someone to actually get ahead, to actually get anywhere in the art scene here. Um, which is sad because I mean, I've been offered shows in the left bank in Paris and in London and in, uh, in Rome. And I'm not trying to name drop, it's just that they see the work, they judge the work. But down here, we somehow need to go to Elam or Ilam in order to be, to, to be um, accepted. I've got a dealer this year. It's taken me two and a half years. No, it's taken me a long time. It's taken me a long time to get a dealer. And it's only because he has had... I don't know, he's just basically really looked at my work and not judged me for not going to Elam or Ilam. The world of art is a, um, a strange realm. You, you can't necessarily, like I find it difficult to, uh, to grade my, the way, what I've done against anyone else because it's all subjective and people, some one person could say, I really think that's an amazing painting, um, but go away not understanding it at all. And someone else might say, well, I think it's kind of ugly, but I see what you're saying. And I, and I like what you're saying. So, you know, I'd much rather have someone understand my work. The series went to Dunedin about two years ago, and it's dealing with the clone, it's dealing with uh, loss of information, mutation of information through the process of cloning. So I had to study, um, study up on that. I wouldn't just start a series without really knowing what I was, you know, at least a little bit of, of what I'm doing. If people can see that something's been done with a bit of vigor, a bit of life, you know, and, and with a bit of, uh, action, if there's some action in there somewhere, then uh, I think they tend to go for those, those paintings. Most people that I, that I know that get to know me uh, they think I'm, you know, they know I'm a little bit whack, wacky. I pretty much am like a broken record most of the time. People say, oh, he's wearing that grey jacket again. I bet it isn't even clean. Well, for your information, it isn't clean. Crazy, a little bit, but in a nice way. I mean, they know that I know what I'm talking about. And I think it's important. At least I'm not afraid to express myself. With a little girl in a Hollywood bungalow. I just don't want it to be all about me, that's all. It's not about me, but my students. This place is, is a pretty messy studio. Uh, it's been running for a, maybe nearly two years, and it's sort of a, a dumping ground for people that I've taught at a, another institution. And after they've finished courses there, they tend to want to do a little bit more, some of them, and so they, they come here. I think 98% of my students have never painted, or they've just painted at school. I like the fact that it's a bit more of a private space, but. Uh, I don't think many people understand. A guy and a girl walking past and the girl said, oh, what happens in there? And he goes, oh, it's a pea lab. <laughs> I, and the only reason I had these windows closed is because my students don't like to be watched when they're working. And I've asked nearly every single one of them. And, you know, when, the, when you start painting for the very first time, you don't want some guy standing there eating his chips. Going, oh, yeah, she's going, oh, she's messing the eye up. Most students I've met from institutions that have come out of institutions, the, um, haven't really learned how to paint. And that's why I started this place, because, because I think it's important to balance theory up, theory up with practical work. You know, theory will only get you so far, and if, you know, imagine, you can't put theory on the, a brush and paint a canvas with it. You know, if you imagine how far you'd get if you really didn't know how to paint by the time you got out of art school, but you knew how to wax lyrical about your painting that you haven't done. It's a white canvas. It's, uh, it's my white canvas. It's, how do you say white? Apparently there are only three people in the country teaching classical techniques and uh, most 
uh, institutions have closed their painting sections. And if you can paint, you don't have to paint a classical face, but if you can paint something well, you can paint anything. You can paint your red box or your, you know, your tractor or your Teletubby beautifully. Every little hair. I really would like to sculpt. I've always wanted to sculpt in marble. I'd love to be able to bring something out of a block. But it's the closest I've ever got, so I think so far, pretty much, is a block of cheese. Cut a little wedge out once. It's important to have your own thing. Be inspired. Uh, you know, if you have to nod to another artist in your work, um, but don't be too derivative, that's, that's all I can really say. Just sooner or later, even if it takes years, people might latch on to what you're saying and you know, appreciate it. Don't do it, don't do it for, ah, don't do it for money. Don't do it for money, do it for love, yeah. If there's one person I could be, it would have to be David Bowie. He's a genius, pretty much. I don't use that word often. And look at his wife. Sheesh.